So uh, first of all, I would like to welcome everybody to this session today and good afternoon to everybody. Uh, to begin with, I would like to give a brief introduction about uh, Professor Dr. Anil Jayant Fernando, who will be conducting this session today. And uh, Fernando uh, is attached to uh, the Department of Accounting uh, in the Faculty of Management and Commerce in the University of Sri Jayawadhanapura. And uh, Dr. has got, uh, the doctor did his master's uh, degrees uh, from the Asian Technology Institute of Asian Technology in Bangkok and the European Business School in France. And Dr. has obtained this uh, doctoral degree from the Asian Institute of uh, Technology in Bangkok. So Dr. Fernando comes with, uh, with extensive and wealth of experience in the field of education. And particularly, he has got extensive experience in uh, curriculum development and examination related matters. And he was, a, he was the project coordinator for the World Bank funded project undertaken by the government of Sri Lanka for transformation of education. In fact, the governing council of the Institute, uh, the education and the uh, examination and the education committees have uh, taken into consideration the importance of, uh, importance of educating our CA students as well as those aspiring to do higher studies on examination techniques. And we find that some of the students, although they have knowledge, sometimes find themselves unsuccessful at exams because they, they do not have proper understanding of the examination techniques. So uh, in view of this, uh, we have decided, uh, the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Sri Lanka has decided to have this session, uh, conduct this session for the benefit of CA students, as well as those from outside who are aspiring to undertake higher studies. And uh, I would like to thank Dr. <coughs> Professor Dr. Anil Jayant Fernando for sparing his valuable time with us, despite the busy schedule and his demanding commitments uh, Dr. has, uh, and devote his time for the benefit of our students. Thank you very much. And over to you, Doctor. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Lalit. And again, uh, thank you very much uh, for CA Sri Lanka and the examination division and those who be, are behind uh, in organizing this particular session. That's really um, valuable for students. Um, as um, Lalit mentioned, uh, main objective of this session is to uh, make aware you uh, how best you should provide your answers at the examination. From our past experience, we have realized that due to some other reasons, there is a kind of gap. Um, this gap uh, may arise due to many reasons, but if that particular gap arises due to a reason, due to misunderstanding or uh, not having um, appropriate understanding about uh, what we expect at the examination. So it's really uh, bad from your end even because you uh, spend lots of time, money and your dedication and effort at the end of the day and you may deliver something for the examination thinking that you provide right answers. So there are lots of um, incidences are they um, when we talk to students students claim that yes we wrote right answers uh, but when the final evaluation comes um, the results are not that um, successful not promising uh, it, it's understood if you can't have a good grade or can't pass an examination where there are uh, weaknesses or lacks of your competencies then it's understood so therefore, the main purpose is to clear off and just educate you what we expect, especially at an examination, how it differs from the knowledge and what you are supposed to do, especially at the examination. So keeping all those things in mind, our objectives, we will um, conduct this session. At the end of the session, uh, feel free to ask questions, even uh, facility has been provided during the discussion, you can post your 
um, questions, I suppose, in the Q&A box or chat box. I think uh, Q&A box is um, allowed for you. You can raise and post or, uh, questions a day. We will take up all those things at the end, or otherwise you can raise your hand and ask questions at the end. So I would like to uh, discuss basically preparedness before the examination. So some points may not only be valid for CA examination. So in general, for any examinations, these points um, uh, would be useful. And again, dealing with action verbs. So we'll be discussing what, uh, what they are really. Action verbs really matters throughout examination. What really drives you to develop your answers and uh, for the examiners to evaluate your answers are the action verbs. Action verbs in curriculum uh, CA examination, they are the common action verbs we have to use. And in CA curriculum specifically, uh, action verbs have been mentioned. Then understanding them, so distinct uh, meaning of action verbs. How to respond? respond to a given and each action verb. Techniques, just before answer, answer so before the examination you need to prepare, before answering just maybe before a few minutes, 10 minutes, once you enter to the examination hall, we will discuss. And real um, answering process or techniques during answering process. Um, preparedness, uh, before the examination, so that's general. Then I'll just take you through. Uh, I'm not going to uh, explain this thing in detail. So it's a, it's a fact that you need to cover your syllabus because the content uh, given in syllabus is the base on which uh, questions can be set. There will not be any question outside of the content. In the syllabus, knowing syllabus, understanding syllabus, or uh, uh, gaining um, to test whether you have adequate knowledge. You have several ways of doing this thing. Sometimes you may depend on your tutor or lecturer or your friends, or it's all right. Or maybe the guideline given in CA books or any other manuals. But apart from all those things, it's mandatory for you to read your syllabus in timing all the contents given in the syllabus in detail by yourself. So that, that, that should be the final um, uh, certification that uh, you, you have covered. If anything is not covered, um, you it's your responsibility to look into all these things and the manager throughout your preparation time. Uh, there is a tendency among students um, that is due to psychological reasons if you are good at particular area, then you love to learn in that area. You love to read more and more. You love to do more uh, questions and um, maybe some exercises on that area. Simply keeping the other areas which are seem to be really difficult to outside of your focus at a bay. So it's really dangerous from examination point of view because you need to maintain this particular balance. So do this thing through a kind of mapping techniques. Um, if you are really weak, uh, you, you have to pay more attention. And the coverage of syllabus is number one. But again, remember that it does not mean that each and every content areas or the competencies would be exactly and uh, evenly tested in the examination. No, it's up to examiners. Examiners would take into account how students have uh, responded in previous examinations and what um, competencies are most important for uh, a candidate uh, for CA and for someone who wants to be a chartered accountant. So present demand, current situation, from time to time, they take all those things into account. They have the liberty, they have the freedom of setting. They may give prior to priority as to certain areas so we, which we will, uh, I mean, we will uh, not know, but our responsibility is to cover the syllabus. Uh, in covering the syllabus, what you are supposed to do is to demonstrate your competencies. It's not something by hearting or knowing about the content. In the content, 
what we expect from candidates are certain types and levels of competencies. Competencies are depicted and explained in the action words. I'll come for example here, say, prepare a journal entry. The preparation is a competency. Preparation is a competency. And uh, reconciliation is a competency likewise. So we use a particular word called competence. Then reference to past question papers, also you need to do this thing with caution. It doesn't mean that simply by hearting past uh, questions and areas uh, given uh, questions papers. You know uh, CA and it's they, they belong to this profession. Uh, like in other professions, now knowledge and technology and new things, finding science, uh, very quickly alter the knowledge and areas. And even with the same competencies, situation may have changed as of now. Because of that reasons, some questions, even within the given syllabus, that has been tested a couple of years ago, maybe five, six years ago, content area is there, but the same question cannot be asked or if you give the same answer that you had given five years before may not be valid. So therefore you've got to be very careful when you refer to question papers, but it's um, recommended for you to look at maybe mock papers or uh, recent past papers. So that's advisable. And the next step before the examination, you should develop, this is an additional competency the talent that you can develop, you try and develop questions by yourself based on the patterns or how the questions have been set in the past papers. Did you get my point? Um, it means you do some decorations with respect to account, maybe uh, financial accounts or economics or any other subjects. So take the given context as they are, and you do some modifications by introducing new numbers, new context, new scenarios, and chain the action word and ask that the same question in a different way. So by asking these types of the questions, developing these kind of questions, you would be able to develop. I mean, ask. so that that, that uh, exercise really help you or build the confidence in yourself to tackle any question which would be which would appear in the examination. But you, your question you have never seen before, similar type of questions you, you may have seen, that's true. But what you are going to see at the examination is the first time that you are going to see. So then you, your confidence level would go up. Then if you could do this fourth aspect, the ability of developing um, questions, you can reach to the other area, the, the prediction. So prediction should not be mistakenly understood. It should not be mistaken. Prediction does, need, does not mean that you are going to predict questions that would appear in your question paper. The prediction, the patterns, areas, and likely questions like, just to get a broad idea, uh, sometimes, uh, you, you can do that. This might really ease you of um, like reading the text or um, getting into a given question. So th these are important. Like if you can cover all those things, of course, you are highly con uh, the confident, confident and easily uh, deal with the paper. Um, now, uh, this is a little bit technical. I'm not going to take you to uh, the perspective from an examiner. I would like, I would ask you to look at the, uh, these action verbs uh, from candidate's point of view. So the same action verbs are used by examiners and you respond to the same action verbs. Therefore, um, examiners have greater responsibility and um, a greater uh, uh, care 
of you seeing these things, not you, because your, your responsibility is to respond to the asked questions. Hmm? Uh, that, that's why sometimes it will be technical, but I, I would try to uh, summarize and explain you why these things are important. These action verbs, such as prepare, list down, compare, and evaluate, comment, explain, likewise, these are the action verbs. So they are used by the examiners in such a manner to link the areas of the syllabus, what we call intended learning outcomes. When we develop a particular uh, curriculum, we write down outcomes. They are called intended outcomes. These intended outcomes should be matched with action verbs. So that is one of the uh, reasons of using action verbs. It has a precise direction or connection to uh, ILOs, therefore, by using the action verbs, examiners really test these things. Then help students, from your point of view, focus on the answer. So I have lots of experience uh, by looking at answer scripts, even at the uh, graduate levels, um, undergraduates, advanced level, and other professional examinations. Due to some other reasons, student, there is a tendency that many, it's all right to say many, it's not over exaggeration, many deviate from the action verb, from the focus. They deliver what they have in their mind. It has a, a psychological reason. Sometimes um, you may have heard about the word called Fuzzy logics, fuzzy logics. Fuzzy logics is something that you act based on predetermined sets of logics in your brain or somewhere else. So that is the danger where you buy hard things, you practice answers for questions, then your brain is automatically formatted in such a manner that whenever you appear or whenever you see something in your question paper or somewhere else, automatically the predetermined, formatted answer or the, the uh, guidance uh, comes and says, oh, this is the answer. So then that's the danger. That is what we call fussy logics without reading and understanding the action. So therefore, you've got to be very, very careful of this thing. and very difficult, I know that we learn in such a manner. Uh, and you also got to use and signals are coming from other students and results. So this is the way we have to do these things, but it's not the proper way of learning. That is why students come down from the examination and may not reach to the expectation, even though you have the knowledge. Unbiased assessments of student responses, because as we use, unlike in the past, we do not have open-ended questions or, I mean, subjectively, we do not test students. Hmm? We pay attention. Examiners uh, make use these action verbs in assessing. If they have asked you to prepare something, if you have prepared it, of course, you are entitled to marks. If they have asked you to list down something, your task is to list down. But if you have done something else, then examiners are not in a position to um, award you marks. Sometimes you may react to the given action well, but in a different way. For example, you will be asked to go uh, from your place to another, maybe, uh, uh, point A to point B direction from your home to uh, close by junction, maybe a particular boutique. So we ask, okay, go and buy this. Thing. That is your action. What you are supposed to do, because you are not asked how you should go there, how fast you should go there, right? 
and the mode of transportation, we don't tell you. We ask you to go and buy these things. That is the task. It is your responsibility to decide because in an examination, time matters. You need to choose your own mode of transportation, own way of going there, most possible shortest direction, avoiding traffic and all these things. So that's your responsibility. But you may go to the same distance or just the destination by different directions, by different modes, and by taking lots of time. So this is an exact example I can quote you in the examinations. Many do not follow the shortest and most convenient way of reaching the destination. Instead, they may reach or somewhere uh, reach destination or closer to destination by, by going from different indirect ways. I have seen lots of things. It is uh, a thing that you have to avoid. And I'm not going to read out all the, the list, entire list, uh, but just to tell you, um, these are common throughout the world. Um, we use these um, action verbs, in other words, competencies in testing um, students. There are six main categories developed by uh, Blooms. We call this is Bloom's taxonomy, but you need not to worry about what it is and how it works. And again, you need not to, like, even though they have been separated into separate uh, columns and separately identified in real exercise, when you deliver or when you respond to a particular action, for example, apply, assess, compare, describe, explain, uh, perform, even though they are in two different columns, it doesn't mean that you can exactly distinctively separate these things. You may see some connections between. So therefore, that is not your part. Don't worry. You just get the meaning of that particular action and react. Sometimes you may see some oh, similarities, even for the action verb uh, describe and prepare, you may have responded a little bit similar manner. Don't worry, as long as you have done it, as you understood, that's all right. That, that is a portion. Hmm? Um, this is the taxonomy. Um, these action verbs have been developed based on this taxonomy. Uh, they, they, they are may, uh, the main uh, learning areas have been identified creation of new thing, knowledge, evaluating something, analyzing something, application of knowledge. And first of all, in order to do all those things, understanding, and you need to remember uh, some important things as well. So it looks like um, uh, um, upside down a pyramid, where the, the bottom is the remembering. So remembering, may hold a key, but it doesn't mean that when you learn, when you go up in your learning ladder, step by step, you need to keep intact your remembering what we call cognitive knowledge, whereas you have to broaden other areas. This is how CA, when you start CA, uh, early stage, or maybe uh, stage one, two, whatever, first stage, the more, most of the examination or the um, questions may look at uh, remembering and understanding areas, maybe application a little bit. Why? So starting point. So later on, when we reach to other levels, of course, your uh, uh, pyramid, the upside down pyramid broaden in such a manner where um, high order level questions would be there. So that's the idea. Now you can understand. It doesn't mean that remembering is not important, that's the cognitive. It's important, but mainly to remember the basic concepts, ideas, theories, something like, not the other uh, areas of doing works, application and system. That comes along with your logical reasoning, arguments, critical thinking. So they are um, in um, some studies carried out by World Bank and some, some other institutions also have identified that uh, today's students um, have, um, they, they are lack of um, 
lots of um, lacking areas have been identified among them what, what really comes top are the critical thinking and analytical competencies critical thinking is deteriorating analytical thinking is deteriorating and effective communication these three areas have been identified and they say that if you are good at all those things of course you can be successful at examinations and these three areas are linked to uh, you need not to worry that but then i can skip like just to connect it uh, because here in the bloom's taxonomy um, we use different words creating evaluating analyzing applying something like but when when it comes to you better forget about this bloom's tax taxonomy uh, we use knowledge comprehension action application analysis synthesis evaluation something like that mm. For example, um, some action verbs, uh, I'm, I have the full list. I will take you uh, through some, not all. Anticipate, but anticipate is rarely seen in your examination or uh, question papers. But if you take advice, can be seen. Advice to the board of directors, advice to the managers. Or you are asked to advise to an investor. Some information is given uh, about the market conditions and the um, performance of the company and other information. And you are advised to um, advise the investor whether to invest in or advise the managers to go ahead with this particular um, loan or investment, something like that. So if it is to advise, actually, your Competency level is a little bit high, evaluation, higher order competency. Not So you can't simply advise. Just think of in your day-to-day -day life generally, how can you advise to another person? In order to advise, you should have adequate knowledge. You need to have the evaluation from both sides. So when you advise, you should know both pros and cons, right? When you advise to invest, you should have evaluated very carefully. Um, if you invest, what could be the benefits and what would be the risks, dangers. That means both benefits and risks are there. You assess and after that you advise, if you do this thing, you can avoid this risk or you can gain benefits. If risks are more than the benefits, you may advise you better not to invest. Really? So therefore, advising is a, in a way difficult question. When you read to that particular level, remember when you answer, your answer should not simply, okay, do this, go there, invest, no. Then you are, can't get adequate marks. Advice should provide or entail adequate information, supportive information justifications why you uh, advise and the negative side as well so you need to highlight so these 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 things are there but benefits really overweigh the negatives this is how that is evaluation part analysis so as the word suggests I'll skip this one application sometimes you may have to apply some accounting standards for uh, instance uh, to deal with a given situation suppose that the company has investments so nowadays the market condition is volatile prices are going up and assuming that there's a company company has bought lots of shares or uh, has invested money in these um, situations so how do we apply a, a particular accounting standard hmm? yeah. for these i mean suppose uh, accounting standard on negotiable uh, sorry um, your uh, um, financial instruments. How are we going to apply? So that is the application. Then when it comes to application, application should follow clearly spe specified principles, rules, and guidelines. Then you apply it and see. Where you are not trying to come out with your own interpretation. That is the difference. But in the case of advice, you interpret. Sometimes uh, for a given question, 
two students, one may have advice to invest, another person may have advice not to invest, but both can obtain the full marks as long as they have provided their advice with adequate supportive evidence and justification. As long as you can justify not to uh, uh, invest with information. This is why I say that ask not to invest. That's the beauty with advice. But in the case of application, no way, all have to apply that the given theory, principle, standard, or things according to the given principles, guidance, and treatments. You, you don't have any other options. That is the difference, okay? This is also application. And comprehension. So this is a relatively lower level of competency. We test whether you have comprehend, you have understood the concepts, simply asking you to do a calculation. Maybe the provision for debts, doubtful debts, or maybe a calculation of cost of capital. Cost of weighted average cost of capital is a concept. You need to use the weighted average cost of capital for so many things, uh, in so many things, uh, project evaluation, determining your next or new borrowings. And likewise, there is a, um, huge, a big use of knowing and understanding the cost of capital, rather weighted average. We can ask you to explain what is meant by cost of capital. Explain different types of cost of capital, how cost of capital is determined when 30% and 70% of um, equity is there. So, so explanation would be there. Instead, we can give you numbers about different um, sources of funding with uh, corresponding costs. Uh, and ask you to calculate weighted average cost of capital. So once you do the weighted average cost of capital, right? what happens automatically, we, you do not explain what it is, but your calculation tells us whether you have understood it. You, see, you see the same uh, competency area can be tested by different types of action verbs. Explain, calculation, likewise. You can classify and um, compare. So I'll skip uh, whenever it is necessary, all those things are, um, I have prepared for detailed discussions for each and every uh, action verb, uh, but I'll skip them and just see define so mostly or commonly used action verb define define something so what, what what do we test or measure your knowledge so definition you cannot have your own definition you need to provide the accepted definitions or definition which have been written textbooks or your manuals or what's there you can't come out with name definition such kind of things would be there in the um, evaluation or synthesization, highly ordered competency, but not at um, knowledge level. Um, comprehension and see this synthesize, but this I, 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 I'm not going to discuss just to show you the difference. If you're asked to design an appropriate mechanism uh, for corporate governance, that is a synthesization. You know that um, corporate governance has become uh, very critical and important in conducting the affairs of a corporation, especially in a market economy. Uh, we know that uh, directors, managers, so they, they, there is a chance that they may use the resources of the company for their own benefits instead of the benefits of the other stakeholders. In order to minimize the balance, these things, lots of governance mechanisms have been 
introduced like external auditors, uh, some code of conducts, companies act, so different listing rules. Likewise, there may be lots of um, compliance requirements and the governance requirements. Maybe at a higher order level examination, you may be asked to design an appropriate governance mechanism for, for this company. So where you have to take into account the existing mechanism, existing rules, theories, but by looking at the specific situation of this particular company, you can come out with a new model, new design. You see, that is what we call synthesization. You have the liberty, you have the freedom. So of uh, uh, telling something with some facts. Discuss, more often you would get this um, action verb also uh, at your examination. You are asked to discuss. So difference between discuss and explain, when you explain something, uh, you limit to the given uh, phrase or the word or the uh, context or the sentence. For example, explain um, what's meant by um, financial leverage, for instance, financial leverage. Then you have to explain only what is meant by financial leverage. So how the capital structure is change by borrowing. That is the extent of, you need to talk about the extent of borrowing in your capital structure. So that is the explanation. In that answer, you are not supposed to talk about the pros and cons of borrowing. You are supposed to talk about only the meaning of borrowing, how borrowing changes the capital structure. That's enough. That is the explanation. I'm just trying to tell you the difference. In that answer, if you write this and you talk about uh, advantages, disadvantages, pros and cons, merits, demerits, and all those things, it's not relevant. It doesn't mean that you, I mean, your marks would be curtailed, but it is a waste of your time. You're doing something unnecessary. But if your question was to discuss, same question, and you ask, your company has decided to borrow this much and to issue shares this much, this is just to finance a given project worth of 100 million rupees. So scenario may be given. Discuss the suitability of this proposal of borrowing both debt and equity. Then you need to not only to talk about uh, the uh, uh, suitability or the positive side of each uh, source of finance, you need to discuss its both merits and demerits and their consequences. What would happen in this situation, that situation in given market condition, you know, the market condition may change differently. So therefore, so discussion, when you, whenever you hear the word, actually you need to elaborate your answer a little bit. Other verbs, I action verbs, I uh, skip. Uh, just let me look for the. Yeah, sometimes you are supposed to do reconciliations. Then, if if it is a reconciliation, just application. So you have two variables from one to the other. Just reconcile. Don't think too much. And very often you would get words like prepare. Actually, these are the whole set of or the basket of action verbs that could be used. It doesn't mean that they are used in your examination. Review, uh, resource, select sometimes. So easy question would be there, just select um, appropriate uh, standard or the elements or dimension. And suggest also, but it is, um, the suggestion um, cannot be done without having adequate knowledge and validate. All right. Um, now, I will move on to um, your reaction to the action verbs at the examination. That is what we call response to 
action verbs. You can't respond to properly, I mean, to an action verb properly, unless you have understood it well. How do you understand it? Then you need to go to that, like uh, need not to buy heart, but a general understanding, general understanding. So go through, so one of the exercises that you can do, take your past um, question papers, maybe last five years question papers, list down all the action verbs given, prepare, discuss, explain, criticize, evaluate, likewise. So you may see uh, most of the words are used very often. Some, sometimes you may find the more, which word is very often frequently used, which word is, uh, which action verb is very uh, rarely used. Um, some of the words, uh, they are in the list, but you have never seen it extended. So it means that as well, like depending on the question paper, subject area, so they are the, it means that they are the most suitable words that could be used in your examination. So therefore, there is a greater chance that th these words would be used. Then you better try to understand, differentiate the meaning of all those things. So then you would be really, really comfortable. It's unlikely that you would get a question with a totally different uh, action verb, synthesize something. No way, you would not get it. You got it? So, so if you prepare in such a manner before, before the examination, actually you would be really comfortable at the examination. The, this one is again a critical aspect, but difficult due to some other reason, maybe from the advanced level school learning, we have been trained and we are being trained to produce and reproduce answers to ready-made standard questions. It's dangerous, but CA, now try, because there are limitations sometimes, uh, CA, university or other institutions. So when there is something, some institutionalized practices are there, very difficult for an institution to deviate from these things 100%. But CA is always promoting the profession and discusses the importance of um, uh, new knowledge, its application and uh, making you high competent individual and professionals to tackle issues uh, that the society faces, cooperation faces in. So therefore, we want to, CA wants to uh, um, uh, train you and um, um, build you in such a manner uh, to be equip, equipped to face any given situation and not to uh, uh, format you. But sometimes students learn in such a manner. You develop predetermined answers, formatted answers, uh, prejudge answers. So if you keep all those things based on the past papers or any other things, even at the examination, it is extremely difficult for you to detach from this. But you have to de detach. If you can detach and read the read given question with a free mind, you would be really successful. We have formats. Again, try to understand the formats does not mean that you have to draw something in uh, like um, vertical lines, horizontal lines and all those things. Format and structure is the way of presenting your um, answer. It is not drawing lines. For, for instance, um, LK is one, presentation of financial statements has a structure. They're the way of presenting, that is the format. So you need to disclose mainly revenue, cost of sales, gross profit and expenses either in uh, functional categorization or um, it's nature type categorization. So that is the format. But due to some other reason, we think, okay, we need to very nicely rule it this way, that way and have separated columns. So that, that is just for decoration purposes uh, to make the reader um, understand things and easily focus on the columns. And that is the reason. It is not a part and partial of the format for the structure. Therefore, in an examination, 
you can provide an answer which is entitled to have 100% or the full marks even without having a single line drawn as long as you have followed the structure. Then you can save lots of time. Sketch the structure of the answer, especially when it comes to structured questions. Um, better before starting the answer, just think of, imagine you have two options. One is to use your mental modeling. In the mind you think that, okay, this is how I'm going to align my answer. Or otherwise, if you think that to you, you know, examination is a tense situation, as a result, um, things that you keep in your mind might go away quickly. So better write it down in a point. Okay, this, this is just not, not detailed writing point. So this is my structure arrangement. And that would really help you. I mean, will not forget important things. Then deliver your answer in a flow. This flow is found to be missing in most of answer scripts. Flow means that the logical way of arranging. If you are asked to advise, finally, advice must be seen. If so, advice whether this particular company uh, accept this particular option of borrowing, you have to advise. You should borrow or not. If you borrow at what rate? But you may have done a fantastic analysis and calculations, costs and benefits, cash flows, <coughs> ratios, and all those things. At the end, you may not have given your analysis. But if someone looks at your analysis, they may come to a conclusion, yes, yes, based on this analysis, yes, I can think uh, it is <coughs> good to go ahead with this borrowing. But if you don't do this, examiners do not have any ratification or any justifications to give you mark because you do, we didn't know as examiners what you intend. So therefore it's your responsibility to deliver your judgment. So that is this flow is important. Uh, this part, I recommend only and only if you have adequate time because sometimes um, you can double check uh, your answers and make sure that all these formalities have been done in your answer script. Still, you have some more time left, maybe 10 minutes. Then you can have your self-confirmation of your responses. So it's not really uh, double checking. You quickly glance through and self-confirm that, okay, so they, they are in line and as I just expect. So there may be cases due to the hurriedness or any other reasons, uh, some important points may have been omitted, but I know that in an examination condition, most of candidates will not be able to do this. <coughs> Techniques uh, before answering. This is, you, you just go to the examination hall and um, you are ready to maybe in 10, 15 minutes time, normally 10 minutes before you would be taken inside the hall, it depends. Once you go there, you need to maintain your patience. Like you need to be very cool, like, uh, but make sure that uh, all the required equipment, pens, your identity cards and all the other things required for an examination. So by looking at your admission card, make sure that um, everything is ready. Even this is a very common fact. There are cases, even university students, so do lots of mistakes and at the examination time, so they may have uh, really left uh, calculators or pens, important things, and they make, so what happens? Sometimes um, examiners, evaluators might help you to find equipment, but your mindset uh, would really uh, drive somewhere as you after that you really deal with the tense mindset because your mind is not set better uh, arrange everything and be comfortable so that's good um, then write down your index number at relevant places um, before uh, starting uh, because answers the booklet is given before the question paper so you do this thing and if you have free time uh, because normally i used to uh, do this thing when I sit for examination all the time. I go to 
the uh, examination hall and I sleep. So I don't do anything. I just put my head down on the desk. I sleep maybe five minutes. Um, you may not believe all the time I get really refreshed. So when the papers are distributed or the answer or the booklets are distributed, if I'm asleep, so okay. So when they touch you the desk, so I wake up. So once you wake up, you feel really, really refreshed when that five minutes is worth, but you have to practice it. So there are some people like, if you can't do that, if you sleep for five minutes and develop headaches, if you wake up quickly, don't do it. So just uh, practice and see whether it works or not. If it works, it's a good um, tip for you to do at the examination. And ignore that moment you are going to um, answer to a, a question paper or you are in an examination, not just feel free, be cool, like uh, maintain uh, uh, that you, you, uh, you are in a normal situation because finally uh, our body is a real chemical body. So this body reacts to the given situation. If you develop unnecessary uh, um, like, um, stress there, your mind may not um, help you to develop proper answers. Uh, if needed, you can have uh, maybe a little um, water, a little bit um, uh, to control your attention and do that. And don't look at the others. And don't look at the question paper. Even the question paper was distributed, don't look at it. Just leave it there. Maybe a few seconds, 30 seconds. Don't worry that that's a waste of time. And just make the environment, especially your physical body, uh, conducive. Um, for the examination, then only you should start uh, attempting the paper. And I'll quickly take you through a specific techniques when you answer uh, questions. There are different types of uh, examinations, sometimes open book examinations and closed book examinations. Uh, no matter whether it is open or closed, so again, two types of questions also would be there either multiple choice question, questions or um, structured questions apart from case-based scenario questions. Even case-based scenario type questions are also uh, structured que uh, the questions, may not be multiple questions. So if it is open book examination, sometimes you might think that, oh yes, it's open book. I can read any information. I can access to anything. It would be really, really easy okay, I will do this thing, even online examination, I can access to internet or wherever. So information is there. Don't think so. You, you are fighting with the time. Then you actually, if you have an understanding that the open book examination is relatively easier than the closed book examination, it is a myth. Most difficult type of examination is the open book examination. If you try to refer to the material for all the questions, actually you will not be able to answer to half of the questions asked in the paper. Then you will not be successful. Open book is to refer to the material only and only when you have a difficulty of framing the answer. Whenever you have a doubt or confusion to double check. So that's it. So therefore, for that purpose, you need to prepare. Of course, before the examination, you need to have a thorough knowledge and overview of the subject area. And when you learn, um, it's always good to categorize your knowledge into different themes. In, uh, open, in an open book examinations, things have to be referred to particular themes, topics, subtopics, title, area. Likewise, you would be able to trace quickly from the given schedule. Otherwise, you may have a plethora of information, data, uh, you, you will not be able to find. You have to struggle where it is and all these things in a, uh, such a stress uh, moment, even though the answer or the information is just within the reach of your uh, fingertips. So you may not be able to find it. So arrange them into themes and maybe key concepts. How do you do this thing? So you can use um, computer application, 
even Excel sheets or maybe mind mapping techniques, uh, um, lots of uh, maybe some other techniques available nowadays. So how to develop a referencing list? Uh, maybe um, very small notes or reference list, what we call a referencing schedule mm -hmm. and with cross references. Um, even you can use uh, post-it um, notes as well according to alphabetical order. So it would be advisable to use alphabetical order or chapter wise, but in the examination, yeah, there is no guarantee that uh, uh, the questions would be framed according to the chapter or sequential order of the chapters. So therefore alphabetical order, uh, uh, the order uh, would be according to my understanding and the knowledge would be the best. Uh, prepare it and keep it with the sole motive of using only and only when there is a really, really difficult case. Otherwise, just keep it there. Uh, don't think that you have to refer to everything and just to make perfect answer. Uh, therefore, I need to take it from the book and write, no. It's a really, really waste of time. You need to prepare, you should know the subject, you should have the same competencies as in the other way, uh, the closed book examination. So then you can develop so, so some points may have been missed out. Don't worry. Um, dealing with the um, MC keys, um, MC keys relatively, again, to be honest, again, difficult type of questions uh, if uh, questions are set in that such a manner. Uh, because you have several options, maybe four. You need to choose one out of four. Mm. When we develop good MC caves, it should be really hard for a candidate to choose one option or choice among four. Highly competitive. So that is the reason why you are requested to read all options. Sometimes, some areas may be familiar to you. When you read the question, you may know the answer. Yes, yes, yes I know that is uh, say 100, or that is that particular standard, or that is this concept, so that is point concern. But you, that, that might lead to a wrong conclusion sometimes, maybe because of the, uh, um, the situation, your mind tells you this is wrong, thinking that that is the answer, but may not be. Therefore, even for the most easiest question, even you know the answer without reading the choices, better read all the options quickly. It works. There are cases many students have marked the wrong answer for the pretty obvious questions because of the hurry this. Oh, yeah, I know the answer, just mark it. But you simply ignore. Actually, the answer is something else. Because the MCQs may have been written in such a manner. Again, you need to pay attention on the action verb, with a, um, which one, which combination, uh, uh, false or not, and uh, uh, sometimes uh, what is the what is not the option, something like even negative form questions may be there. So you better highlight them and pay attention on that read. So sometimes, so what what is the most uh, a critical element to be considered in determining? something maybe activity based costing critical but the question maybe may have been asked what is not the most critical element when it is in the negative form you may forget what it is when you read the option you think oh what is the most critical element the positive one you write it but the question has asked you the not the critical one you think you go home thinking that you gave the right answer it's not Time allocation, of course, I just noted here, not only for this uh, valid for MC kids, other structured questions and all these things. Time allocation also matters. Um, it is a fact, since we have a limited time, how are we going to allocate your time? There are different ways of allocating your time. Um, and speeding up. Sometimes you may practice, so just attempting and doing more uh, or as many as questions possible and you speed up and getting or improve your time, but that would be a little bit mechanistic. Most scientific time allocation is 
it should be against the marks allocated for the given question. If, we, if, if it's a three hour paper, three hour paper, so that is 100. So total time allocated for including the time for reading, 180 minutes. So you can uh, exclude maybe 10 minutes for reading. So 170. Total marks, 100, roughly assume 100. So 170 minutes divided by 100 for one mark, you have only 1.7 minutes, roughly. There would be slight variations, but that is the way you have to arrange first. Then if your question, even if it is a fantastic or a question which is um, valid for a PhD level, hmm, so what, what would be the ethical conduct of corporations nowadays? That question can be asked for a thesis. <laughs> you can write pages and pages, but only five marks have been allocated. If that is the case, even if you know lots of things, you pay attention on the action verb and take into account the marks allocated five into 1.7, it comes from roughly eight minutes. If it is going to be a little like difficult, if you have more time, you can go up to maximum of 10 minutes, not more than that, or reduce it. So likewise, there should be a variation. So but sometimes you would be fascinated with the question. You know lots of things. Then you start writing without considering, like uh, thinking how much marks have been allocated. For five marks, you may have spent 30 minutes. Your answer may be perfect. But when you take the examination from the holistic point of view, you are unsuccessful. You are failed because you have spent time for unnecessary things. So this is seen in many answer scripts. And um, MCQs, you can um, skip difficult uh, questions once you read it or sometimes the area you may know that, oh, no, no, I don't know this thing. I have not studied, so big confusion. If you're not sure of, doubtful, and it's too difficult for you, just leave it, move to the next, and likewise finish it. And then you can come back to this. And some of these things, difficult or doubtful, so in the second attempt, you would be able to assume that. There is a situation now, it's difficult, doubtful, some susceptibility is there to choose the answer. You may feel like oh, two answers look alike, or difficult. Then you need to use some techniques. The best technique, what we call, is the elimination method. Elimination method. Where what you are trying to do, what you are supposed to do is to first eliminate the wrong choices. There could be um, uh, obvious, choices that could be eliminated currently. And from the left, sometimes say, finally you have left with uh, two options, that is 50-50. Assume that all first um, extreme case, you are not in a position to determine two uh, choices are seen to be identical, you have a doubt which one is correct, you have, you have no clue, then actually you need to use guessing. Can't help, like uh, it, it, it may work, but never leave any question unattended, especially multiple choice questions. Multiple choice questions, don't worry whether you mark it wrong. There is a chance, at least 25% chance that you would get the correct answer. So, uh, elimination. Mm, uh, in addition to general elimination, you can use some uh, other techniques as well. Some weaknesses may also be there in questions. In a very good multiple choice question, question MCQ, if it is a tough one, uh, if the choices are numbers, numbers should be arranged either ascending order or descending order, then it is really difficult for you. So elimination have to be done in like very careful manner. Sometimes answer is a combination of two numbers. Then you can find one number at least, you do one calculation or one uh, point, need not to worry about the other. 
then you can look at the answers okay where your correct answer is seen that means your answer that part is not there in a given choice that means they are wrong then you can eliminate so that elimination is also possible just take a clue or part and see whether your answer is seen in the given choices and exclude others these are really technical tactics it has nothing to do with the competencies given in your uh, subjects or intended learning outcome so uh, examination techniques and sometimes in your answers so like where are you i mean i'm just giving these techniques like uh, elimination techniques and guessing techniques it's only for questions which are difficult doubtful and you have you are you are struggling on then some questions like where you come to a certain level you have two three options of it or maybe two you can't choose but it is more likely that so the historical research has found more likely that the option or the choice which has more explanation which has more explanation or lengthy answer detailed explanation is more likely to be the answer it is not the, i am not saying that that is the answer but it, it is more likely whenever you face difficult situation lengthiest answer answer with more explanation more emphasis is given is likely to be the answer that's in other i mean very uh, uh, logical ways of elimination and eliminating and guessing and sometimes assume that you can't do all those things you tried and you are really desperate you don't have any other options you can't think of even all those things even if such a situation better not to avoid to leave any question unattended even what we call in singala kana right just mark in marking either you can take a risk maybe um, there are different ways of marking uh, unknown questions so you just keep on ticking the same either b or c for all unknown to play something like so you are taking a risk hmm? uh it's always worth so this is what we have to do with respect to multiple choice questions structured questions this is another area so your competency should be little bit different time allocation is the same way but answering the selecting or the order of answering really matters sometimes your teachers must have advised you to select and answer the most easiest question first i am sure that you have been asked please do it choose or give answer to the most easiest or comfortable one that you can you believe that you can develop a good answer you have the answer you know the answer for structured questions for multiple choice questions so you don't have any option so you need to follow for so these things just write the answer to the most easiest one why actually it has a psychological impact when your examiner marks or read your answer script especially this is the area where examiner is going to read you when the examiner reads you the first answer is amazing answer fantastic answer already you have earned 90% 100% 80% it gives the uh, kind of impression to the examiner that this student is a smart student student has given a fair answer basically examiners i'm just telling you most um, uh, right uh, the beneficial way to you no matter in case whether you have written your answers in the order that you like it's all right it doesn't make big difference but always in an examination you should uh, try to follow the most uh, appropriate way for you to earn at least one mark so that also matters sometimes then the examiner has such uh, mentality when the examiner marks other answer scripts 2 3 4 due to some other reason the last one so you did not have enough time and all these things so you answer out of 10 uh, examiner gave you one then examiner's mindset just 
asks and urges him, hey, this student has scored 80%, 70% for all the other questions, for this one only one. Or did I make a mistake? There's a chance that examiner like that, that situation really push the examiner back to recheck your answer. And if there is a possibility because some marks uh, cannot be altered or changed, if that is objective answer, but for subjective answer, there could be a chance that you would earn one additional one or two marks. Or sometimes examiner may have uh, um, overlooked some parts that's possible. They are human in the mark uh, uh, answer script. So, so that, that, that it has a psychology. And if you give a wrong answer or stupid answer to the first one, then the examiner gets a totally different uh, perception uh, about yourself. Oh, so it's a really wrong answer. This student is not a smart one, but that is not, I mean, you are really smart, but you choose the wrong question first and the answer is wrong. But your final or third or maybe towards the end, you have given fantastic answer, 100%, 10 out of 10 after objective marking, then examiner will recheck that answer as well again. How come this student got 10 out of 10, whereas the first question was zero out of 10? That is cycle. Whether I made a mistake in marking then, so that mentality works in a negative way. Okay, I hope you understand this. Um, and do not write anything that has nothing to do with the action verb. So don't uh, provide, I already explained the thing a little bit. Um, even though you have the knowledge, even though you want to demonstrate that you know that and this, you better not to provide this thing because it doesn't carry any mark. Answer to the question, mainly to the action verb, ask, that's enough. And provide only the relevant workings. Sometimes you are asked to provide workings. How do you know that is a relevant working or not? Working involves when it comes to calculations, actually, not in other cases. Even in the calculations, the old fashion of providing workings were that you develop the answer, for example, profit or balance, or maybe the cost of capital or whatever, the things you calculated, weighted average cost of capital or NPV is 25,000. That's the answer. You are asked to calculate NPV, you give, you provide it 25,000, of course you would get it. But you say workings and somewhere there you have given a reference and um, provided, that's one way, but it's the traditional old way. So nowadays uh, we advise students to provide the workings then and there at the same place. Don't provide your workings at the end of the answer. So I start together with the beginning. So you provide the answer together with the workings. You do the workings and provide everything. So this is your answer. And sometimes some calculations now you are allowed to do, um, use, uh, you, you, you are allowed to use calculators. When you use calculators, you keys, different numbers, maybe five, six, uh, addition, multiplication, subtraction, so that and this. So getting power, <clears throat> sometimes scientific calculations as well. Final answer is exactly correct, but there is a chance that you may go wrong. You, you are asked to calculate the weighted average cost of capital, or you are asked to calculate the carrying amount of debtors, something like, you know, that the carrying amount is obtained uh, uh, by taking uh, some numbers. So you have to decide whether it is relevant or not, how you obtain that particular number. If you take a calculation, your answer is coming as a result of two or more numbers. Of course, write down the way you have calculated it just in front of that number if, you, if the time permits. If you ex ex uh, extract a given number in the question paper, need not to provide any workings unnecessarily. Don't reproduce the same things as workings. There's no, no use. So working should be provided only as a help for the examiner to determine whether the, uh, the candidate has attempted correctly. Assume that to calculate the weighted average cost of capital, you use eight variables. Assume that that correct answer is 8%. One candidate has calculated 8%, then 
no matter whether assume that workings have been given eight uh, full marks another student 8% no workings still you would get full marks another student 7.5% no workings zero marks another student 7.5 with workings then the workings would help the examiner to determine whether the candidate has taken the correct approach some of the marks can be allocated so that is the use of uh, advantage of providing workings and uh, the final um, advice when you develop your answers so already i just told you what to be included and some points what not to be included and sometimes i have noticed in answer scripts you write down your grievances your difficulties and unnecessary blessings in your answer scripts and um, better not it is not professional to show your weaknesses in the answer scripts of course they do not um, curtail your marks for example if you write something unnecessary some grievances some requests some pleading or some wishes mm, before starting uh, due to your cultural religious or any other things so you start writing something based on your religious um, uh, uh, practices and all those things but don't do these things at examination because examinations are objective things religions culture or any other things are highly personal things and showing your weaknesses or grievances and all those things will not really uh, be a uh, reason for the examiners to give you uh, marks and pass you no know, matter because they have to be like a um, fair by or every student so mind that i have seen this every even now even university examinations this thing and you do not get any advantage but there could be a situation sometimes you might um, be penalized even. because you know that in a society where um, uh, hatreds can be promoted maybe on religious grounds or nationalities ground or any other grounds or maybe school. like so we, we have so many differences different identities assume that i am an examiner i am an extremist i'm an extremist of course even though i'm extremist i can't 100% fail you but you write an answer i come to know that i'm an extremist in some or other form maybe religious or nationality i come to know that this answer script belongs to someone who is against my extremist idea ideologies then what is like please that there would be a possibility i don't say that so normally examiners can't do i'm just telling you uh, by taking into account the practical situation so that person may not have a sympathy of giving you subjective marks whenever it is possible then that would be blocked so there is no assurance that who will mark your papers so therefore maintain your um mm, uh i mean general identity as a candidate only don't disclose your any other petty identities so quickly i will take you through um some questions taken from your past papers uh, from corporate governance and ethics paper to tell you how you should frame your answers and if this is the um question you should start reading not from there that is you should not start reading p and p associates you should start reading explain what you are supposed to do required explain four procedures p and p should carry out prior to accepting nomination for you that is the thing therefore signal is passed to your brain hmm. i am supposed to explain what Four procedures. That is your requirement. Therefore, if that is the case, better not to write five. Better not to write three, six, four. Limit it to four. That's enough. But if you have a doubt, so sometimes you are not sure whether that's a procedure or not, then you may write five. So if that's the case, that's all right because you are not sure that whether it is a procedure or not. But if you know that that's a procedure, just limit to four. You know five. There's no need. One mark, one point. Limited. 
Okay, I hope it's clear to you. Then you should start reading the text. PNP Associates, a firm of chartered accountants, tendered for the audit of Graphite Private Limited, that is GPL, which is in the business of extracting and processing minerals. So that is the nature of the business. <clears throat> then when you talk about the procedure, you need to pay attention on the particular nature of the business, risks associated with this and the other area for export. GPL or its management is not known to PNP. So another additional information is given with respect to independence. You know that the audit the procedures when audit is being carried out, the independence matters. So that so that information comes automatically. So uh, when you have these procedures and explanation and reading this thing, if you read the text first and read the question, what your action verb for later, again you will have to read the question to understand what what it is. So double reading. So you you can save your time if you start reading the action verb first. And PNP is interested to accept the appointment as the external resource. So I hope it's um, clear to you how you should frame it. If you do not know the answer, that is something else. But so if you follow this procedure, uh, that would be really easy. And here, the action verb is the explanation, explanation, and not simple listing. Therefore, you need to provide a kind of additional explanation, just elaboration, how it is to be carried out, procedure, how uh, uh, um, uh, you should um, follow the thing. So should you refer to the external or the previous auditor or whether you should refer to some code of conducts and any other things has to be uh, mentioned, not in detail because Four marks have been allocated. You don't have much time to uh, write as you, even though you want it, maybe five, six minutes so, or something like that, not more than that. And use, um, actually, the, the, uh, the common techniques, you know that it's always advisable to use highlighter, red pen or any other thing to mark these things. Don't think that you are, like you can bring answers to that. Like the, nobody question paper is with you. you know? um, just use highlighter, red pen, or any other pen to mark uh, important things because developing an answer, um, you may divert from the main focus. The best way of stopping this is to highlight the areas to be focused. Another question. Um, evaluate, it's a difficult one. This one is simple explanation. You are not bringing any pros and cons, advantages, disadvantages. You do not argue. You do not provide an answer whether you should do that or this. Here, you have to evaluate. So reading first, evaluate the effect of matters described in one to three. So here one to three points are there about on acceptance of the audit engagement. So referring to the same case, evaluate. So this evaluation should really produce the outcome, whether there is a risk or not, whether uh, special attention should be paid or not. What's the level effect, right? On what? On accepting. So that means you need to either conclude uh, because of this, so there is a risk of accepting or risk of accepting is high, low or something like. So that the evaluation uh, should be there. Evaluation is in a way conclusive, concluding. You need, I mean, whoever who reads that answer should know R. So this is the final impact of this acceptance and whether you accept or not, like we are not saying whether we are going to accept it, we evaluate. So risk is there that much, this much, something. Because you are not sub, uh, supposed to give an advice, only evaluation part. Therefore, in evaluation, both positive and negative should be there. For each and every point, one, two, three, you need to separately disclose. For example, number one, PNP had been the auditor of mining company for 10 years. So therefore, in a way it has, 
experience. Hmm? Uh, so therefore, your expertise risk can be reduced in a way. So that's evaluation. But that particular team is no longer with PNP. So there is a doubt. There are the evaluation we need to check how the previous audit matters have been documented. Um, we do not know. So th these are the evaluation, whether that knowledge has been uh, documented. Um, otherwise, even though we had had experience 10 years ago, now you don't have that competences. Even you may have referred to past experience, but new team may not have uh, that particular experience. So likewise, again, uh, one director of the company and a significant shaul is holding a position in a government and is close associate of the cabinet minister. So then how the independence and the influence, independence of auditors would be uh, impaired can be checked. Then again, uh, Ajit, uh, the Fonseca's matters well. So here we are not supposed to develop an answer, but I'm just telling you what you are supposed to do. In an evaluation, you need to provide both pros and cons. Then uh, this example, again, evaluate and advise higher order actions. Actually, these are the areas where you've got to be really careful. Uh, lower level uh, action verbs such as um, prepare, write down, journal entries, reconcile. So they are straightforward. But when it comes to evaluate, advise, so difficult here, simple difference between evaluation and advice. The second action verb, there should be a conclusion conclusion what action you are you propose uh, to the other party to take but in the case of evaluation that is the end result both pros and cons benefits and uh, uh, issues I, I hope you put the point so in the evaluation you are not supposed to give the final uh, recommendation it's only evaluation whether it is positive or negative that's it um you see these are being this um, stage most of the action verbs are high order level evaluate and recommend so you see the recommend so recommendation can't cannot be given blindly with reasons always again propose when you you propose again you need to have evidence you need to tell why so that why should be there. Why means it. So you need to say, okay, I propose to um, carry out do, uh, these things for each at each outlet in order to maintain completeness. Just follow these things because of this. That should be there because of this. Or do you do this? Otherwise, your answer is incomplete. But here, you are not supposed to write unnecessary detail because only three marks. So therefore, just recommend one proposal with the reason, because of this, because of this. Assess is um, more or less the evaluation, uh, but in this assessing, you need to tell the level of assessment, effectiveness, whether it is effective, high level, low level, or moderate, or whatever, um, something like, so someone who reads the answer must be able to. So recommendation also connect to all the answer in the case of B. Final conclusion is there. Comment, it's a different type of um, uh, action verb. How does it differ from describe, evaluate, or recommend? You know, here, when you comment, comment on your ethical responsibility in accordance with the code of ethics issued by here. Comments can be given from different perspectives. Comments can be given as a manager, as a profession, as an expert, where you need to comment, like, so your opinion. So comment mean your opinion, but not the uh, dogmatic opinion without justification. But you give a reason and you comment. So this is, this is, this is, this is my opinion based on that particular question. But here, you can't comment according to your own thinking or own way of uh, answering. Here, it has to be referred to the code of ethics. Then you need to know what are included in the code of ethics issued by CA Sri Lanka. 
accordingly you have to say that in line with this the code of ethics says okay you are supposed to do these things if you engage this kind of this is a, a breach of a code of uh, ethics a code of conduct therefore you should be punished or there should be some uh, um, actions uh, against so th this is the thing or otherwise you will have to tell uh, whether there is violation of the code of conduct so that is the comment comments me in a way more or less uh, similar to uh, um, commenting or uh, giving a conclusion or recommendation but it is not really recommendation uh, giving an opinion based on some um, from your point of view you should not try to exactly separate the meaning of each and every word but try to understand the general meaning of these action verbs that would be pretty much adequate again the pay attention on the marks allocated six marks then you have roughly 9 to 10 minutes time then you can write uh, lots of things and here again um, the recommendation um, best fundraising options out of the two options mentioned above by analyzing the impact on the financial statements of hp based on the principles of lk study to financial institute here again recommendation so but this recommendation cannot be again done on your own way or on your justification It has to be referred to what yeah, you need to read impact on the financial statements by referring to this standard as well so we refer to this particular standard what would be the outcome whether there would be when we talk about the financial statements it would have an impact either on assets and liabilities or income and expenses how would it affect to your profits how would it affect to your net assets so these things are must recommendation so you say that because um, this option will increase the profitability they are quite recommend this option will reduce your profitability go like uh, the, the expenses are greater than profits so that, that is the uh, rule a uh, decision rule therefore i do not recommend you can go for both sometimes your calculations may have gone wrong so the objective calculation will tell you that um, it's really a uh, profits right but your calculation due to some other reason generated a negative result that is loss then you recommend okay i do not recommend at least you would get marks for your recommendation your recommendation in line with the fine your calculation your justification because your your calculation uh, the, the ask you not to recommend therefore you have recommended not recommended therefore your recommendation is correct you got it then marks are there but your calculation justification in arrive to that is wrong therefore some marks may be reduced but in a situation where you ended up with the wrong calculation you said it i recommend to go ahead with this option then no marks at all so your calculation is also wrong your recommendation is also wrong so with that uh, i think uh, i'll stop uh, from my end um leaving uh, the floor for you guys to ask questions i hope we have time uh, lalit uh, how much time do you have uh, uh doctor we have time till 5 o'clock okay no problem so we have 20 minutes left um, yes so i think uh, this is a good opportunity for you all to ask questions and i am sure that doctor has given very good insights into uh, use of uh, examination uh, session techniques for you all to succeed at examinations so if you have any questions uh, please uh, raise them now
yeah one um, question is they are been answering uh, on online exam how to manage time um using excel uh, i'm not sure what has been asked uh, no matter whether it is an online exam how to manage time using excel spreadsheets um i am quite not sure what has been asked uh, uh can uh, can you further elaborate or just ask it uh, actually no matter whether i mean how you work it out whether by using excel sheets or um, any other forms so i think that depends on the question i think so that that depends on the question paper uh, uh, i think so right, right, right. in so like in some papers some basic, questions, yeah. some questions there are standard files but uh, for some questions there are excel files you can they have to provide uh, they have to uh, take from say fix and browser and they can uh, create ah, the excel, right, excel right, right. files so that, that depends on the types of the question so no matter whether it has to be provided in uh, uh, in an excel sheet or any other mode irrespective of that particular mode um, time allocation general technique is to allocate your time corresponding to the marks allocated to each question because there is no hard and fast rule that a uh, particular question should be answered with that much uh, uh, content as i just told you same question can be asked to give uh, 50 marks 10 marks 5 mark or 1 mark if one mark you should not Spend more time, maybe one for maximum two minutes, not more than that. So that that is the way. Just use that particular ratio, leaving ten minutes for reading. Take hundred and seventy. So if it is three hours, if it's two hours, so you can calculate the number, the time in the number of minutes. Divide it by the marks allocated. So that would be the ratio. And um, thing is this. So that that is the standard. but you know some students may be good at some areas not in other areas so therefore um, it does not mean that exactly you follow this rule and limit your time for instance say there is a question 5 marks multiplied by 1.7 it comes to say 8 minutes you allocate a time is 8 minutes and there is another question 4 marks it comes to 6 minutes so assume that uh, all together 8 plus 6 it's 14 uh, instead of stopping your answer for the first one at 8 minutes and the second one with 6 minutes if you can manage both question within 14 minutes that would be ideal so it depends on so sometimes there may be possibilities for you guys to save time from easy questions that is the reason i even i just ask you to attempt uh, your questions um, um, wherever you see that that is easy one right attempt that one first then you save more time that time can be used for the rest that is the basic way of um, allocating or managing time other than that there is no any other technique that i know um yeah um online examinations that sort of just um, even dalito aruno also can explain a bit on this thing regarding online examinations so they they, they are supervised exam examinations um the instruction for online is so no matter whether it is online or physical at the end what we measure is your competencies so there are four um, answers should entail all these uh, those competencies in uh, mentioned in intended learning outcomes but um, you you can improve your writing but here 
as uh, Aruna explained, some answers, if they can be developed in Excel better into your computer um, knowledge or competencies in dealing with computers and other things. But other than that, uh, I, I believe if, if, if I'm wrong, Aruna can explain. So you are supposed to write down your answers and take uh, images of this thing and upload. Uh, so these, these, these are the general ways, even at the university nowadays, what we do like this, uh, we send the question paper in advance and the password would be given um, maybe five, 10 minutes before the examination. And you are monitored throughout the examination and you are given after the examination, you are given some time, maybe half an hour or 15 minutes to take photos and upload them. So that is, these are the basic things. Sometimes, depending on the nature of the question paper, additional instructions may come. I, Arun, is there anything else uh, that we can tell that student? Yeah, uh, so doctor, if I may say something, you no, know, with regard to the conduct of online examinations, students are given very specific instructions. Uh, as to how they should be handling word, word sheets, MS Word yeah. sheets, MS Excel sheets, etc. I mean, right. these things are uh, these things are explained to them and demonstrated also. So they will have to really follow these instructions to the letter. I mean, if they of course deviate, there'll be uh, there'll be issues. So these things are properly explained to them, and these instructions are very clearly yeah. and specifically given to them. Doctor. All right. All right. Uh, like in, if it if it is applicable for that particular examination, so you need not yes. to worry about specific uh, instruction, guidance, and all these things. You just follow them. That is what I just told you. Please read the instructions very carefully first. Uh, for for instance, I can um, share experience from my university. Uh, being online examinations, uh, you know that like when we conduct examinations online. Uh, the, we face the difficulty of maintaining the equity. Um, sometimes, you know, there would be situations where some students might get advantages uh, compared to others by referring to the unknown people or maybe uh, accessing or if you are good at technology. So, so many things, even copying. So things which are not supposed to be done at examinations can also be done. Therefore, in order to minimize these things and to maintain the fairness in the examinations, we give specific instructions even where to place your or write down your index number. It is not the same place. So we give you the first page only on that time. Um, because the password is given just 10 minutes. Uh, then for each and every question paper, the place where you should write your index number, you have to write down your signature and some additional marks. We specify what you are supposed to do in order to verify that you would not really engage in unauthenticated um, practices rather. Uh, Arun, is there any um, additional reading time? Uh, yes, for some papers there will be uh, there will be additional reading time. Definitely, under online mock online exams, there will be additional reading time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. For all levels, that um, is applicable. Yeah. So, best thing is to read the instructions very carefully before attempting to any question. Now feel free to ask any questions. Yeah, I saw one comment that like, um, it was a bit boring. So can't help, but I just tried my um, uh, level best to uh, tell you what is important in an examination and what happens based on the real experiences um, 
from students and uh, how they deviate from answering questions. Uh, yeah, if you have any doubt, um, I know that for some, some of the areas um, uh, would be just yes, boring and too technical. Uh, again, when it comes to um, answering, just clarifying these things, there is no any other way of telling you the truth. Um, because uh, knowing about how to attempt an examination cannot be uh, freely provided as instructions. So it, it has to come along with your analytical thinking. Um, if you just want to know what you are supposed to do at the examination, just follow this, 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 it could be highly mechanistic. And um, professional examinations like CEO, even undergraduates or any other places. So we do not expect the students to just react like machines. Uh, to a great extent, we want to test your competencies in analytical skills, logical reasoning, and uh, mainly effective communication. It cannot be achieved by simply dogmatically uh, reading instruction and reacting on this. It's difficult. That's why uh, I advise everyone to read your syllabuses very well, uh, including the learning outcomes. If you can develop a mapping, as I just told you, you can use some computer softwares, take ILOs, intended learning outcomes, written there, the, the contents, and link. Then at the end of the course, once you have learned, check which areas have been developed. Like you may find you may be weak in certain areas, just mark them separately. So that is how you should uh, develop your competencies. Right. Yeah, we, we can have some more time, like we, as we have five minutes or so. Either type it or ask the question directly to feel all right. I think, Doctor, if I may add something following every exam, the, the sure. institute publishes examiner's chief examiner's comments. And there, you know, very often we find that students are not focusing on action words. I think they yeah. should take the bit of what you have explained in detail and how to uh, cater to action verbs. Mm. Yeah, that's what that I am just trying. But advice is so when you when students go through this list of action verbs, precaution is better not to try to uh, figure out what each action verb distinctly mean what and from how does it deviate from the other because even in uh, the Bloom's taxonomy. Uh, Blooms has specifically mentioned that there would be overlapping. So there would be overlapping. So it's extremely difficult. So that is why this taxonomy has been given only for the examiners and teachers to think of how best we should teach and test. So then students should not try to um, master this taxonomy, but students just carefully or slightly uh, uh, differentiate it in a simple manner. So how can you do this? In, don't look at the entire list. Look at the action verbs, which have been repetitively asked in past question papers. They distinguish. For instance, I just explained you the difference between the uh, explain and evaluate, explain and recommend. Then you know, so don't worry. So there's no hard and fast rule that they are distinctively different actions. But when you react to this particular action, if you have done totally something else, then the examiners are not in a position to allocate you marks. That, that is the problem. That is why these things are seen in examiners' comments. For example, so many students by heart answers. You go to the examination with predetermined answers. Therefore, 
So you don't have any option. You don't care what is asked. You write what you want. This is what we call fussy logic. Then the examiners face a problem. How come? They have been asked to prepare a statement, but they have prepared ledger accounts. They have been asked to do a reconciliation, but you have prepared a fantastic, complete income statement. That was not the requirement. That is where uh, the problem arises. So, you, you, I mean, it's difficult since we are learning and learning and we engage in a context where we are trained for exams. Actually, we are not learning, to be honest. I'm just telling you from, this is there in the university system as well. Uh, we, we need to um, inculcate a habit of learning against a habit of practicing for examination or practicing for question papers. So if you try to learn the examination techniques as a tool to practice for questions, so it's a failure. But as a techniques of learning, then that would be a success key factor. This is what we try our level best to uh, inculcate in you. Yeah, someone has uh, referred to open book examination. Yes, you are right. Um, but that's what I just told you. Uh, don't think that you need to check the accuracy of the answer always with your text because it takes time. Don't do that. That is the reason why you become fit because you have spent lots of time to reach it. No, no, don't do it. So you prepare for this exam in a way that is, you have to spend more time than a closed book exam for the open book exam. You master it, you know the answers, you refer to the book only and only when you want to have further clarification or provide additional information if the case may be, not otherwise. Don't worry, even in, a open, even in an open book examination, suppose that you prepared lots of material and kept everything just beside you at the time of examination, but you could not use it. Actually, you did not want to look at all these things. Don't worry because you have done the job very well with the knowledge that you have developed. So don't worry. Otherwise, if you have a mentality that, no, I have to refer, I have to give this. So examiners won't check them. So it is open book examination mentality or the condition is that just to facilitate students in a case where they won't have a double check, but they also know that it is not something copying you otherwise. We, so what is the use of just asking you to uh, book, look at books and copy, reproduce. So that's so open book means so we test you, we test your competencies, but we competencies with additional facts and evidence. So just tracing facts, only the relevant facts. That is also a talent. You know what to be included, what not to be included. Those who would be successful and open with examination is ones who can uh, separate and understand this reality. Right. I think I hope to. Uh, I hope I gave an answer to that um, question asked by Sajini. Um, it, it's up to you. Don't worry uh, whether you have used the books or not. Yeah, Arunal, are there any other questions? Just check in the question, uh, question and answer box. Yeah. Something related to examination time and all these things.
there is a question about so, so lali can we just take few minutes hello yes doctor yes yeah there is a question like um, please tell us uh, tell some tips about how to summarize an answer which is involved with much workings for example we can work out a lot in the calculator and we write less um, how to show workings in a summarized way so this is this um when you use your calculator um, so of course you can use lots of numbers lots of calculation maybe 10 15 numbers it doesn't mean that you have to rewrite all those things whenever you come out with the product so like even you use 10 numbers you are not going to take the final output of these 10 numbers in between so when when you key two numbers you would generate one value that value can be written somewhere as a working so name it for example um, you, you need to work out total expenditure so employee expenditure two items or three items you calculate key it and take that value e employee expenditure there's 50000 another cost of finance cost separately so likewise whenever it comes to themes different categories subtitles or subtopics so include all those things instead of writing everything Uh, that you have keyed into your calculator you need not to do that then the final answer can be given something like actually unlike in the past now there is no hard and fast rule how should you should provide your workings because since we use machines we have to provide workings only and only when uh, in a situation where you go wrong with the final answer but you provide some ways or the steps of reaching this so that that's the idea i think yeah we addressed the question about the online examination yeah someone has asked uh, so where the examiner really check for giving marks so it's nothing but really the reaction to the action verb if you have produced an answer to the action verb then of course examiners will give you mark because so normally objective marking would be done uh, so that is why uh, we emphasize on the reaction to the action verbs i hope like um, we have taken up all the questions in the q and box and the chat box is there anything missed out uh, aruna uh, not much sir not much uh, i think we have scheduled to finish this at 5 pm but anyway we'll see uh, oh, oh. right Okay then. then um, if there are no any questions, uh, I think uh, we can wind up. Um, thank you if so anything, much. If anything further to this, sir, they can contact us to website uh, inquiries. So contact numbers oh, they can right. ask different divisions about the examination, education, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Keep in touch um, with CA Sri Lanka, and uh, then they will provide you. proper guidance and instructions and what to do and always no matter whether this pandemic situations they work for to online work from home and you would be taken care and you would be given required advices and things so they they attempt uh, even the very first objective of these kind of session was to put you into a, a right direction and uh, because you are going to be in sooner or later one day Uh, ca sri lanka Ch chartered accountant so chartered accountants are professionals so they hold key responsibilities uh, in an economy in a country where you look at the things from very holistic uh, point of view your contribution your knowledge your competencies really matter for the society so that is the reason so that, that is why um, we care about the way you learn uh, we hope uh, with the little time provided to us Uh, we provided you um, from the examination point of view the guidance 
And since we live in a learning society, it is the whole responsibility of you to make use such knowledge and lots of uh, learning platforms are there, information is there. Nowadays, actually, we need not to worry much about the knowledge. Knowledge is everywhere. Facts are everywhere, textbooks everywhere. So what matters is how best we analyze them, use them, interpret them, and produce and convert them into answers in a logical and rational manner. So that is what is missing in most of the answer scripts as per its comments. So try best because you are highly capable, you are talented, competencies are there. If you work in that way, for sure, uh, you would be able to um, achieve um, good grades and improve your performance at especially C examination and other examination. So I wish you all the best um, for you guys. Um, and one day be a great citizen of this country and work for the society. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Doctor, for your time. And I hope all of you have got have had a very uh, rewarding experience with uh, Dr. Anil. Thank you so much, Doctor. Okay, you are welcome. It was my great pleasure. Thank you, Ben. Uh, let's uh, close this session now. Thank sure. you, Doctor. Okay. Thank you once again. Bye bye. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.